Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So today we got a very special episode for you. We're actually going to go through how to prep a plate uh, in order to get tested. So in a previous episode, we built the bend test fixture uh, with, the, the, with the pneumatic system that we have here. We're going to go ahead and utilize that at the end of the video. We're going to go ahead and actually bend these samples. So one thing that's important to note is the preparation is obviously key, right? Preparation when you go in to do your weld test. While you're welding, placement of the welds, the heat of the plate while you're welding it, all that stuff is very important. We've covered that in previous episodes. But today we want to walk you through the testing procedure. How do we set this plate up in order to, you know, advance to the next step of a guided bend test after the visual inspection has been made? So once you pass visual, there's certain pieces that have to be cut out of this test sample in specific places. And if they're not pulled out from those specific places and they're not prepped in a certain way, you could fail that test. So the preparation work that goes into your test plates or the samples is just as important, if not more important, than the weld that you actually performed and the base metal preparation you did pr uh, prior to that. So we're going to go ahead and get into it. I'm going to show you exactly where to cut the specimens from, how to cut them, how to prep them so that you guys have good results. Because I've actually seen great looking welds that you know, we didn't, when we got to the testing procedure, uh, they were cut incorrectly or you know, they, the, the grinding wasn't done correct way or the plates just weren't prepared uh, as they needed to be according to the D11. So we're gonna make sure that you have that uh, you know, little tool in your tool chest. We're gonna give you some, uh, some things to think about and you know, that way you can put, start putting checks and boxes as you go through this to prep your samples to go ahead and present them to your instructor or the CWI or whoever, uh, whoever's inspecting your welds. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'll show you exactly how to do the layout. We'll get it cut up, ground down, and then we'll do some bending. All right, so for those of you following along at home, we're using the 2015 edition of the code book. We're on page 159, figure 4.22, and this is for um, welder or welder operator qualification. Okay, so here's our test plate. Okay, you want to have at least six inches because uh, this, this can also be done as radiograph testing or x-ray. Uh, but when you do that, you're going to want to change out your backing strip. Backing strip should be at least uh, three-eighths by two inches, as noted in this detail here. Uh, but because we're doing a guided bend test, we just have a regular backing strip on here. This is quarter inch by one, and that's going to be removed for testing. Now, a lot of people ask, you know, why do you have a backing strip on there? Why don't you just do open root? From my experience, it's more repeatable, and it, it's a faster weld. You know, going through, there's a little bit more joint preparation, but the success of this joint has proven in structural conditions to be a lot more secure. Um, like I said, that's just my opinion and from what I've learned over the years. So that's why we use the backing strip. Typically in the field, it's actually left in place and as welded condition. So once it's welded, the, uh, the run on and run off tabs may be cut off and, and blended right there on the ends. But for the most part, everything else is left in place. Uh, so you're thinking like moment connections or beam to beam, column splices, anything like that. So we're going to go in here. We have a, a seven inch weld sample here. So you can use up to six inches, like I said. Make sure you have a minimum of six inches. Uh, after that, we're going to find the center line of this plate. So this is the most important part. So I have my center line marked out here. All of our dimensions from this point on are going to be pulled from the center line. We're going to move one inch or 25 millimeters for my friends across the pond in either direction of that center line. So that's one inch space here, a one inch space here. Now this is a two inch specimen that we can actually use as an alternate sample if we have, uh, if we experience a break in the weld metal or if there's a crack in there where there's no signs of visible slag inclusions or lack of fusions, we can actually use this as a, uh, an alternate test bend sample. Uh, so from that one inch point, right, we're going to move over an inch and a half from that one inch point on either side. That's going to be our two specimens. We're going to go ahead and pull one face and one root sample, okay, because we're actually working on a welder qualification. So that's right here. Go to page 136. We're going to be doing a groove weld. 3 8 plate. We need one face bend sample, one root bed sample. Now we could substitute for a side bend. We're not going to do that here because if we do a side bend. You actually have to uh, cut off a 3 8 wide strip and that's what you're actually going to bend and you'll bend that uh, on, on its side. So we'll probably do that in a later episode. Uh, but trying to flame cut a 3 8 strip out of there is going to be kind of difficult. You could use a, a saw or a cutoff wheel or anything like that. But we're just going to go ahead and do a root and a face today. So let's go ahead. We have our piece prepped up. Everything's laid out. We're going to go ahead and flame cut these. Once we get done, I'll show you exactly how to go through all the grinding and uh, give you some tips for success. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and make my cuts. I'm going to make them on the outside of the line. 
That way the kerf doesn't interfere with the dimensions of the samples that I'm gonna pull out of here. Okay, so now I'm gonna make sure to cut on the outside of this line again. I cut on the outside of that one. I'm gonna cut on the outside of this one. That way once I get done, that strip is at least an inch and a half wide. And because I can still see that mark on there, we're gonna take the grinder. We're gonna clean that up, smooth it out. Just a little bit easier to follow. All right, again on the opposite side. And this doesn't necessarily have to be the face. We can use either one. Again, cutting to the inside or outside of the mark, whichever way you're looking at it. Make sure I burn right up close to that line without going over it. You gotta remember, you're working with about a 3 16 turf with the oxy fuel. Okay, so if you're cutting on the line, you're gonna be just shy of what you need on both sides. All right, so we, go, we went ahead, we have our uh, one sample here. Here's our two inch center piece that we can use as an alternate, as I said before. And then we have our other one and a half inch specimen here. I'm gonna go ahead and take these over to the table. You want to let these cool down on their own. You don't wanna go ahead and shock it by uh, you know, putting you because these are hot, you don't want to go throw them in the quench tank. So let these cool down until they're at room temperature, and then you can, uh, or you know, just throw it in the uh, throw it in the vise and start grinding it down, get it get it smooth that way. First thing I want to do is remove the backing strip, and I'm going to utilize that by. Um, I'm just going to take the grinder to it. Now you can take a scarfing tip, but you end up, uh, you know, depending on how proficient you are with the scarfing tip, you could cut into the parent metal. You don't want to cut into that. I just want to get rid of that that backing strip. Uh, you can use saws. I've used those before. Uh, porta bands work really well. Today I'm just going to use the Victor Grain from Ferd because that thing just eats metal really quick. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how beneficial those are and how quick this stuff's going to come off with that. Typically I don't prep my alternate unless I need it, so I'm not even going to worry about that. Uh, you can take the complete backing strip off if you'd like. Uh, you know, prior to cutting your specimens out, I found that it's easier just to cut the specimens out first, and then I only have just a small section of backing strip to worry about. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off the uh, both pieces, and then we'll worry about cleaning up the edges right after that, and then I'll show you guys how to take the weld off, and then prep and blend everything uh, so we can bend it. All right, so we went ahead and took the backing strip off. Uh, you just wanna grind it down to bare metal. So once that backing strip's all gone, stop. Don't dig out if you see like any, any, any imperfections in there. Don't dig those out. You don't want to coke bottle this piece because you have to remain that, uh, that 3 8 thickness throughout the whole piece when you bend that. So if I try to dish anything out and taper that down, uh, you're not going to be able to test that. So make sure everything's nice and flat and smooth and it's still 3 8 once you're done. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and I'll put it to the, uh, the weld side. I'll, grind, I'll blend that weld down. We'll clean up the edges and then I'll show you how to do uh, some blend grinding, little tips on... Uh, how you want to do that, you know, so you get the best results with your testing as well. I like to put it in the vise to where <clears throat> the uh, the plate and the weld still above the jaws, and I'm just going to grind this flat. Now, if you have a little bit of a bow in the plate, like this one does here, I'm going to start my initial grinding going this way to take everything down, and then when I do my final blending, I'm going to run this way because I want the striations or the little micro cuts that's going to be coming from the grinding wheel to run parallel with the, with the bend, okay? I don't want my grinding striations to be this way because that could put little micro cracks in there and then once you go to bend it, it could cause that piece to fail. It's very rare, but it's a possibility. So when I blend everything, I want the scratches or the polishing marks to go this way. And you don't have to polish this entire piece. I'm just gonna clean up right here where the weld area is. Knock it down, blend it, you know, smooth transition, and then we'll clean up the sides and then we'll be good to go. But that's very important don't dish this side out and make sure your striations are running parallel with the, uh, the, the width or the length of the plate. All right, so again, I just wanna take the weld down. I don't wanna dish anything out. So once that weld's completely gone, that's as far as I'm gonna take it. You don't wanna dig in any deeper. I'll come back in here with a, um, a flapper disc and I'll move the striations to where they're uh, left and right on this piece. So I'll come in from this angle to clean that up so that as the wheel turns, it puts those striations left to right as, I, as where I'm standing. But before I switch wheels, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and take care of the backing strip and the weld on my other test coupon.
All right, so as you can see, I still got a lot of life left in this thing after taking off two backing strips and two welds. I'm gonna go ahead, flip the pieces on edge and clean up the sides. All right, so with the edges, what I'm gonna do is I just wanna take this down, make it nice and flat. I don't wanna take too much material out because remember, I still need to maintain that inch and a half width. So that's a very important part. So right now I'm just gonna cut off these, uh, the cutting marks and smooth this out, right? Try to get it as, as flat as possible, but uh, as long as it's an inch and a half wide and all these imperfections are removed, we should be good to go. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start cleaning everything up with a, a flapper disc. Okay, now I'm allowed up to eighth inch radius max on the corners. So that's, as this piece sits right here, I can radius each one of these corners about an eighth of an inch. I'm not gonna get too carried away. I'm just, I just wanna break that corner. So if you've ever um, been in a rigging class or if you've ever picked anything up with a crane or you ever strapped anything down to a trailer, you know that you don't want to apply a strap or a chain on a 90 degree angle because that is where all the stress accumulates and it could fracture there. So if I go and bend this piece just the way it is with those hard 90 degree edges, I stand the risk of incurring a corner crack right here just because I have a sharp edge and all that load is going to be applied to the corners and rip. Same thing when we wrap our corners in welding, right? That's exactly why we do it. That's where the stress is gonna accumulate. So I just wanna break down and round off this edge. Like I said, I'm not gonna get crazy. I'm allowed to have an eighth inch maximum. I'm just gonna kind of rotate a flapper disc right across the top and just smooth that corner out. Don't have to get crazy with it. You can actually do it with a file, shouldn't have any issues. All right, so while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of some of these deep scratches done by the Victigrain. It's a more aggressive wheel. So I'm just gonna kind of smooth that out, polish it and blend it as I radius these corners on all four pieces. Then what I'll do is I'll take the, uh, the same flapper wheel and I'm going to blend where they, uh, the backing strip was and then where the face of that weld is. I'm gonna blend all those in and then we should be ready to bend. All right, so as you can see right now, the striations are going perpendicular to the width of this plate. I want them to go parallel. So I want these scratches to run this way, okay, if at all. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that flapper disc, I'm gonna blend and make sure that everything is nice and smooth this way. Like I said, I don't have to polish the entire plate. I just wanna clean up that area where the weld is. Again, I don't wanna dish this out one way or the other because I need 3 8 thickness all the way through. Wraps that side up, we'll go ahead and flip it over. Do the same thing to where the backing strip used to be. Again, don't get aggressive. These little imperfections right here, that's where the backing bar was. I had a little bit undercut on the tacks. Don't attempt to chase this stuff out, okay? If it's, a, <clears throat> it's not a weld defect, okay, we're focusing on that root weld right there. So don't go chasing anything, which is gonna cause the thickness of this material to be anything less than the 3 8 that you need. All right, so this right here is all prepped and ready to go. Uh, what I'll probably do is just deburr these edges real quick to knock those off. That way I don't cut myself when I'm handling it because these edges are still sharp. Uh, but everything's blended on both sides. The radius is done on all four corners. Everything's blended in smooth where the weld used to be. Same thing goes for the backside where the root weld is or the root of the weld is. Um, everything's blended, striations are going the right way. So this coupon is ready to be bent. And then notice that I didn't take out a lot of thickness of that material. I still have that three eighths throughout. So the moment we've all been waiting for, the actual bend test, okay, you've, you've done the preparation, you completed the welding, you've got everything prepped just perfect, everything's, uh, everything's right the way it's supposed to be. Now what we have to do is we have to do one root bend and one face bend. So how we're going to do that is, you'll notice there's a small curvature in the plate, okay, and that's not from dishing out the welded area, that's from when we welded the plates together, they kind of form a bow. One way you can prevent that is to use a strong back. We've done that in previous episodes. You can go check those out. Basically, it's, it's just a brace on the back side to keep that plate from bowing. Because I have to do a root and a face bend, I don't want a large curvature or a banana shape in here because what I'm gonna have to do is if I do that for the face bend, I'm gonna have to push down. Not only do I have to break it back flat before I have to extend it for a 180 degree loop, Right? So you want to make sure that this is as flat as possible. A slight bow isn't going to cause you a problem, but if you've got like a massive curve in there, you know, you could run into some issues. So I recommend using strong backs or pinning this into a fixture as you're welding it to alleviate that metal draw as much. So we're going to go through, I'll just run this through as a, uh, the face bend. Okay. So that means that I'm going to apply the plunger to the root side of the weld so that all the force is against the face of the weld. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to slide this in here once again the side that faces the plunger is the root of the weld because I'm gonna bend the face. So the face is down here. That's where I'm gonna put all the stress. 
All right, so if you guys haven't seen how we actually built this test fixture, the camera guy is going to go ahead and put a link right about here somewhere. So you can go ahead and click on that and uh, check out the full build video on this. All right, so now that we have this piece in here, we're going to go ahead and measure it and make sure it's, on, it's equal on both sides. Now that everything's centered, plunger set accordingly, we're good to bend. Let's go ahead and let it rip, tater chip. Okay, so this, as I said, this is the face bend. You can actually see where everything tied in. You can kind of see the dissimilarities in color right in here, but we got a nice smooth bend on the face. No corner cracking. There's no slag inclusions, lack of fusion or impurities in there. All in all, this is a solid bend. That's what you're looking for. Now, if you do have discontinuities in here, the inspector's gonna go through and they can measure each discontinuity and there's certain parameters that it has to fall within. Uh, we may cover that in another episode, but there is a certain amount of discontinuities you can actually have in here. So, for instance, you know, if you have a little bit of uh, porosity or some undercut, uh, as long as it doesn't exceed an eighth inch or the combined total uh, doesn't exceed uh, three eighths when you add them all together. But like I said, that's another time for another episode. Let's go ahead and do the root weld. To do the root, we're just going to do the opposite of what we just did. I'm going to apply the plunger to the face so that all of the pressure is emitted to the root of the weld, right? That's where I want to put that pressure. So again, I'm just going to line it up in here, drop the plunger a little bit, just double check, make sure we're centered as possible. Ready to bend. Remember, the roots down here, that's where we're going to apply all the force. So once again, nice good weld. You can actually see right here, we're fused into the base metal. There's no corner cracks, no lack of fusion, no internal porosity, everything's good. Okay, so both coupons, face and a root. Now that's what's required. Okay, so if you're doing two root bends, uh, two face bends, that's not gonna be good for a welder qualification test. You wanna make sure you have one root, one face of each. Okay, so you actually see these little blisters right here. Okay, that's just what I call them. I'm not sure what the, the technical term is, but that's just where I have my tack. So you can actually see that that is weld metal that's been stressed, where it's tied into the base metal, and there's that little bit of undercut I mentioned earlier when we were blending this. So I said, you don't want to chase this stuff out, okay? That's not going to affect me in any way. As you can see, we still have a successful bend. You can actually see right where the root of the weld is in this piece. These are outside, that's, so that's the outer perimeter of that backing strip right there. Hopefully you can take some of these and apply it to your next test. Uh, there's a lot of work in the preparation, but if it's done correctly, it can help you, you know, pass your test. So, like I said, preparation of the coupons, you know, to get those bent is just as important as the weld test. So having a good understanding, a good foundation of how this whole process works, uh, it's definitely a great skill and an asset to have if you're going to be a welder. Because depending on where you go, you know, you have to test at every single job. Uh, and this is just one of the many tests that you can actually take you know, to get your welder qualification according to different welding procedure specifications for each employer. So just having that background knowledge and understanding, I highly recommend if you're welding to a specific code, such as D11 or D12, D13, it's a little bit of an expense, but go ahead and purchase that code book, uh, you know, or see if you can borrow somebody's code book. Check out with your local AWS section. A lot of times they have a library and you can check these books out and read them uh, and just have a, a good understanding of what's involved in that code book. If you're going to be qualified to weld in that in those procedures, you should have a good understanding of those. So, hopefully that helps you guys out. You know, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, always just drop a comment down there in the comment section. We'll do our best to help you out. Till next time, make every weld better than your last.